Today is yoga for stress and the theme of the week is spiritual study. So as you start to land on the mat, come to a comfortable seat. If you need to grab a chair, grab a chair. There are no special awards for learning to sit in easy seats. Some of us are just not anatomically designed for that. So listen to your body. Come to a seat, start to land in the body, perhaps bring your hands to your stomach to feel your breath, starting to ground yourself. So there's a reason why yoga is different than just a physical exercise program. So system that addresses the whole system of the human experience. So it has a little bit of everything, trying to balance all of the layers, not just physical. So as you start to land, start to think about spiritual connection, what that means for you. And the wonderful thing about yoga is that it allows for whatever your spiritual connection or beliefs are, allows space for you to grow in whatever they are. So if you don't have a particular spiritual practice that you already follow, you can start to think about that part in you that connects with something outside of you. And this can seem like a crazy concept, but there is something in us that can't help it stop time and focus on something. For example, times when we've had a sunset or a sunrise, take away our breath and just everything stops and you connect to that moment with nature. Maybe you've laughed at a baby, even if you don't know the baby, when the baby is giggling, you've laughed with the baby. Maybe just those moments, think about the times when we've had being lost and a happy puppy greeting us. Those moments, those are spiritual connections. Those are, there's something inside of us connecting with something outside of us. And that's as simple as it needs to be, just holding on to those moments of spiritual connection. So starting to slow your breath in a seated position, starting to really feel your hips, feel your shoulders, really grounding. And throughout practice today, we're going to think about spiritual connection. And I'm going to read the Aramaic Lord's Prayer. So I like the Aramaic Lord's Prayer because I think it gives us a little more. It defines things in ways that are a little more inclusive for me, at least. So as you start to sit, listen, I invite you to close your eyes and let go of listening with the cognitive head. Start to listen from your spiritual self. O Bertha, Father, Mother of the cosmos, creator of all, focus your light within us, make it useful. Create your reign of unity now through our hearts and our hands. You, your one desire then acts with ours as in all light, so in all forms. With gratitude, we receive what we need each day in bread and insight for exploring life. Loose the cords that make of mistakes binding us as we release the cords with which we bind others. Let us remember you always and notice our forgetfulness. From you comes all ruling will, the power of life to do, the song that beautifies and renews all. May this be the source from which all of my actions flow. So I think that's a very beautiful way, especially releasing our cords, the cords that bind us, the cords of mistakes. It resonates for me for it's not that we get rid of the mistakes that we've made or the activities or the things, experiences, but we release the cords, release the attachment to them and start to let them just be a part of our whole experience. So we're gonna start with some movement. And again, this practice today, stress, yoga for stress, is for about finding and releasing tension, not increasing tension. So not lots of muscular action. We're just gonna move and make some freedom. So starting to feel your hips on the ground. Start to take little spirals, thinking about moving from the heart center, or maybe even bringing your hands here if that helps you. Little tiny spirals. So the smaller, the better. Trying to connect with just some of those internal spinal muscles. 
Maybe even keeping your eyes closed and really feeling your heart center leading you. Reverse your circles. So think about all those cords that bind us to our mistakes. The cords of regret, the cords of self-judgment. Bring your chest to center and we're going to lift our chest forward and then draw our shoulders back. So pulling forward, inhale, exhale, draw our shoulders back. So think about forgiving oneself, cutting those cords of judgment on ourselves. Inhale forward, exhale, squeeze, little squeeze, not a huge spinal movement, just connecting with the waves our spine can make. Come back to neutral, we're gonna go left and right. Inhale, center, exhale, tilt, shoulders over. Inhale, center, exhale, tilt. Trying to keep the hips neutral, grounded, and moving from the rib cage. Thinking about all the ways our spine can move, nice and gentle. Just creating some freedom, some slow, gentle, tuned in awareness of the movements our body can make. Shoulders back to neutral, inhale, center. This time, turn the shoulders. Inhale, center, exhale, turn. And really thinking about what you're doing with the rest of your body. Notice if you're pressing down into a foot or a hip, trying to squeeze a little more distance out of your twist. Ask yourself who you're competing with. And just think about gently freeing up some space in our spine. Bring the shoulders back to neutral. Release the hands if you have them on your heart. Take the shoulders, soft wiggles, left and right. The shoulders up, squeeze them tight towards the ears, and then let them drop suddenly, and then take a couple of rounds, squeezing tight, dropping suddenly, trying to get some wriggles, trying to get some wobbles in the shoulders, loosening any tension in our shoulders. And then we're gonna work through the neck, nice and gentle when we work with the neck, chin neutral, kind of parallel with the ground, inhale, center, exhale, turn to a shoulder, Inhale, center, exhale, turn. Moving with our breath, mindful movement. And if it helps you throughout practice to tune inside to how you were feeling, what you were feeling, bring your eyes closed. Bring your head back to neutral this time. Inhale, center, exhale, taking ear to the shoulder. And again, watching any compensation patterns, watching for yanking and pulling from somewhere else and just move slowly, mindfully with your neck. Slowly bring the right ear towards the right shoulder and hold it here. Notice what holds it. Where do you feel the tension? Slowly and gently move your chin. See if you find a place where there seems to be more tension. Connecting with the left side of your neck, really feeling what is holding in here. You can bring your right hand underneath the collarbone and just have a gentle touch here. Connecting with the skin, connecting with what's holding. Breathe into the space. Release your hand. If you're using your hand, bring your chin back to neutral. Slowly take the ear over to the left shoulder and gentle, slow, mindful movements with the chin finding left side. And again, option to take the left hand just under right collarbone. Breathe into the space. Release what is held. Imagine you can take all your fresh breath and send it right down the side of your neck. 
And with the exhale, sweep away some of this tension. Slowly release the hand, bring the chin back to neutral. And we're gonna work in slow circles with the head. Things to watch for, don't drop the skull back onto the vertebrae. So we're looking to lengthen the neck and work through the ways our neck can move slowly. So we're not rolling or hair flipping, we're moving slow and trying to feel all the ways our neck can move. Take your chin down to your chest, move mindfully when we work with the neck. Take your head in a very, very, very slow circle as if you're trying to feel every single way your head can move. Lengthen as you look back. And then back in the opposite direction. One more time. Slow, gentle breath. And then chin back to neutral. Bring out the shoulders. And I'll work through between the shoulder blades. So upper back. We're going to squeeze the shoulder blades together. Squeeze them tight. Watch for tension or holding patterns in the low back or anywhere else in the body. Squeeze tight just between the shoulder blades. Try to isolate right between the shoulder blades. And then pull the shoulder blades up with the squeeze and then down. Inhale as you rise, exhale as you lower, trying to keep that squeeze. So this is a common pinch point, a common stress point for a lot of people. So think about increasing it. Think about connecting to the point where perhaps you hold a little tension and really increasing it. So bringing all of our awareness to this space can help release some of this tension, kind of over-exaggerating the tension. Just to start to bring our brain to be aware of this place so that we can start to loosen and soften. Bring your shoulders about mid, so not all the way up, not all the way down, still squeezing the shoulder blades. Connect to that squeeze, squeeze them tighter, tighter, tighter together. Look for compensation in the low back or anywhere else. Watch for pressing into feet. Breathe, soften your face. And then we're gonna squeeze shoulder blades round and forward and then squeeze them back. Try not to move anything else. So shoulder blades round open and then shoulder blades, squeeze back. And then take your shoulder blades all the way up to the ears, shoulders up to the ears, squeeze and hold, take deep breath in. And with the exhale, let them drop. See how your shoulders feel. We'll work with the arms a little. So inhale, lift the arms, rise. Exhale, lower. You can take, start to take this as a little bit of a spinal movement, lifting up the chest. And exhale, a little bit of a hollow out. Mindful, just move with your own restrictions, your own body patterns. Start to stretch through the fingers. Start to lengthen through the fingers, opening up the hands, activating the hand muscles. If you have tight wrists and stretching your fingers wide can cause issues in the inflammation in your wrist, make a claw so that you're really using the muscles in your hand without pushing into any inflammation in the wrist. See if you can work so that all of your arms, fingers, shoulders are strong and active, but everything else is nice and soft. No compensation patterns in the lower back, in the neck, or in the face. Bring your hands to prayer, heart space, interlace the fingers. 
We're going to inhale, open up the fingers, lift the chin. Exhale, squeeze the hands back down, bring the chin back to neutral. Inhale, lift. So our hands are not touching our throat. We're just using our hands as a guide to think about opening and then squeezing close. Once you start to think about opening and squeezing close, bring your awareness to your throat. Think about inhale, open your throat as much as it can, and then exhale, give a little tightness, a little squeeze as your breath goes back through. So inhale, open, exhale, squeeze the exhale out. Almost as if you're trying to catch the air as it squeezes out, allowing your breath to cleanse the back of your throat. Inhale, up, exhale, squeeze. it down neutral spine hands at prayer heart space let your thumbs touch your chest center think about this space bring as much of your awareness as possible right into the center of your chest as if you're trying to reach the center of your existence the thing that's underneath the part of you that's underneath all of the layers underneath the mind underneath the ego Underneath the clothes we choose or the body we're in, the part deep in under that kind of binds all these pieces together. And then slowly make your way to a tabletop position. And we're going to move and breathe in a tabletop. So inhale, tabletop, exhale towards a child's pose, making this movement your own exploration in your own physical body. Inhale forward, exhale backwards. You can take circles with the hips, making kind of U shapes as you come forward. You can take the movement through the back. Start to really connect with how moving with your breath feels. Feel your hands on the ground. Feel your feet on the ground. Land on this mat, your sacred space. Nothing else is here. The mat doesn't care how you look or what you've done wrong in your life. The mat is just here to support you in your practice. Start to think about this being your own sacred space. Then come on up to tabletop. Hold in a tabletop and we're going to take some little soft barrel rolls. So make space for your wrists. Make sure your wrists are comfortable. We're going to barrel roll our chest nice and slow. So we're not rolling in space, but we're really trying to feel all the ways our torso can move. Slow, steady breath. And then go in the other direction. Back to neutral hip circle. So take your hips in a long circle, nice and slow. Option to place something in under knees if your knees are sensitive. Another trick is to take a little more weight into the arms coming over and off your knees. And then back in the opposite direction. Really trying to locate any angles where you feel some tension. And again, we're always looking for muscular tension. Never push into nerve pain or anything that feels like bone issues. And then 
and come on back to tabletop. Take your right leg out, even with the hip. Lengthen through the right leg. So really pressing right heel away from you. Watch for buckling in the back. So buckling in the shoulders, buckling in the low back, hanging out in the joints. Be active and strong. Press through the right leg. Breathe and hold. Maybe bring the left arm up. Balance. Breathe and hold. Notice what happens when you start to balance. Notice what happens to your breath, your face. Breathe, lengthen, press through the right heel. Hold that leg up as it's starting to feel heavy. Lower the left hand, bend the he knee, take the heel up to the ceiling. Little pulses, watch for buckling in the back. So we're moving from the leg and only the leg. Try to keep everything else steady and stable. Steady breath. And then send the right leg forward straight. Lower the toes. Press through the heel. Static or little pulses. Breathe. Take the tension out of the neck. Lower the right knee. Set up your base. Maybe changing the wrists. So we have a little bit different shape in the shoulders. Steady base first, right. left leg out even with the hip. Breathe and hold, maybe lifting the right hand. Lift up out of this left shoulder, watch the buckling in the back. Breathe, steady breath, steady base. Lower the right hand, bend the left knee, heel to the ceiling without moving the back. Steady base, steady breath. Send the left leg towards straight, lower the toes, press through the heel. And then bring it back to tabletop. Set up a base in tabletop so you have some weight in the hands. We're going to be active in the shoulders, so finding the muscles of the shoulders. We're going to allow the shoulders to take slow circles with a little bit of weight in our arms. Just feeling the ways our muscles can move, nice and slow. And then back in the opposite direction, think about freeing up your shoulders, making space. And then send the hips backwards. If you have blocks, option to place the back behind your elbow, not on the elbow joint, onto the blocks. So lean back, thinking about lengthening in the back of the upper arm. Hands can be in prayer above your head. They can rest wherever comfortable. Thinking about just lengthening from the elbow to the armpit. Find a comfortable position to breathe and hold. Slowly come on out. We're going to place our right hand down, right knee in line with the right hand. Le right leg can tilt over towards the right a little, just to give you a little more balance. You can tuck the toes or keep the top of the foot down. Pressing the top of the foot down can help stabilize you. We're coming to a baby half now. So toes tucked can help stabilize. You can also bring a little more tension into the knee. If you press the top of the foot down, it can help you lift up out of both shoulder and leg. We're going to leave the left toes down at first and focus on the right shoulder. So this is hanging out in the shoulder and this is pulling up from the shoulder. I'm going to pull up out of the ground, not hanging into joints. I'm up on my fingertips. You can be on your hand, whatever works for you. 
Breathe and hold and think about lengthening and pulling left shoulder open, pulling up out of the ground, rib cage long on the right side, maybe extending the left hand, maybe beginning to lift the left leg. If you lift the leg, press through the heel, extending through the leg, nice and strong. Breathe and hold. Option to just bring your hand onto your hip. We're gonna lower and lift the heel. So inhale, lift the heel. Exhale, lower the heel. Really strong in the leg and watch for lots of spinal movement. We're really thinking about the leg. Nice and stable in the torso. Find your base. Lift the left heel about even with the hip. Slowly bring it in towards the nose without moving anything else. So a little bit towards the nose. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower the leg. Slightly different angle of the leg. Notice how everything changes. Maybe a hand on the back of the hips to try and remind yourself to keep the torso stable. Watch for dropping into that right shoulder. Keep it strong and lifting up out of the ground. Breathe, watch for tension in the face. Bring the right leg up even with the hip and then take it past, lower the toes. So then lengthen left side body. Think about pressing the hips up and getting as much space on the rib cage as possible. Take the tension out of the neck. If your shoulders are tight, you can bring your arm bent and just think about pushing the armpit up. Breathe and hold. Slowly make your way to tabletop. And then we're gonna go over to the other side. So setting up, left hand down, lots of space for the wrist. Lots of strength pulling out of the ground. Left knee about in line with the left hand. Slowly pull the hips open. Lift up out of the ground. Set up your steady base first. Strong core. Breathe. Maybe lift the right arm. Maybe lift the right heel. Press down into the top of the left foot or the toes. Lift up out of the ground with every muscle you can find. Set the face. Nice self face. Breathe. Inhale, lift the heel, exhale, lower. Nice and slow, trying not to move anything but the leg. Slowly bring the heel up even with the hip and slowly towards the nose, a little bit towards the nose. Inhale, lift the heel, exhale, lower. Slowly bring the right heel past the left knee and lengthen, press the hips up, open up right side rib cage. Breathe as if you're sending your breath in between each rib. Not dumping into the left shoulder, really pulling up out of the ground, breathe. Slowly come back to tabletop. Bring your left hand, turn the fingertips towards your knee, closer, is easier on the wrist, further away, it's gonna open up the wrist more. So take a little weight in the hand, thinking about lifting up the palm of your hand, the back of your hand, and placing it down, working through the back of the wrist, just slow and mindful.
and then switch sides, right fingertips towards the knee. Go up with the heel of the hand and down. Place the hands down and make space. We're really gonna focus on the hands. So maybe sink the hips a little bit further backwards. We're gonna focus on a little bit of weight on the hands, but pulling up out of the ground. We're not dumping into the hands and hanging out on the wrists, We're trying to make a little space. And we're gonna work through the muscles of the hands while looking at the fingers. Pull the thumbs up, press all the other fingers into the ground. Pressing the thumbs up high, wrists down, to so base of the hand down, sorry. Thumbs up, switch, index fingers up. Switch everything else down, pressing the fingers into the ground, lift the middle fingers. Notice left and right sides. Take a moment to notice whether one finger lifts higher than the other. Switch, ring fingers. Switch, index, up, uh, little fingers. Lower, turn the hands towards you and lift the fingers. So find a way that you can place your fingers down. Pull the thumbs up, press all the other fingers down. And then switch, index fingers. Notice how it's a lot harder to connect when you can't see your fingers and when they're in a different angle. Now, middle fingers. See how much you try to cheat the movement with some other muscles? Watch your shoulders, watch your face, watch your back. Bring your ring fingers up. See if you can lift, 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 lift. Connect with the ring fingers. You can't see them, but can you lift them? Lower and then little fingers. Pressing all the other fingers actively down into the ground. And then bring it down. And we're going to come to an easy seat. Again, option to use your chair. To find your easy seat, look at your hands and rub your hands. So rub some circulation into your hands, especially into your wrists, using one hand to rub. Bring some warmth, bring some care to your wrists. So we use our hands all day, every day, and we hardly ever think about them. We cause a lot of strain because we use them without thinking. So be mindful attention to our hands. So we're going to bring our fingertips together and press our fingertips together, connecting to how it feels to press our fingertips together. And then interlace the fingers, pull the fingers apart. Think about making space. Take your hands out in front of you, look at your hands, and we're gonna take slow, slow circles with the wrists, so we're not rolling around in the joint. Oftentimes when people have stress in the joint or inflammation in the joint, we do a lot of rolling, trying to shake it out. We're gonna get this going. We're gonna do mindful movements. We're not working into inflammation, but we're trying to think about making space. So sometimes when we actively think about moving the muscles, we can get some click, 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 lining up at the hand. So you're going to look at your right hand. You're going to let your right hand take really slow circles as if you're trying to feel every way it can move. Looking at it, trying not to let anything else do the movement. Watch your shoulders. Watch your low back. Go back in the opposite direction. And then stretching the hand out, bringing the hand into a fist, nice and slow. Other side, look at the left hand, slow, slow circles. Trying to find the muscles of the hand. And then go back the other way. And if you find any part that seems like it's extra clicky or extra kind of Feels good to go in that direction. Play with that a little. Open and close nice and slow. We're 
We're gonna do a little soft massage. So you're gonna take the thumb of your right hand to the base of the thumb on the left hand. You're gonna make circles and then work your way up to the base. So the base of where your thumb joins, heel of your hand, little circles all the way up to the base of your thumb. So all the way, this pad of your thumb, making circles here, bring lots and lots of circulation here. So common point of inflammation, if you can run your thumb around to the midpoint of this pad and kind of push in, you can find often a point where a lot of people have tension. When I, when I massage clients, this is often a place I can feel a lot of inflammation. So you move your thumb around here, start to see what's present. And notice sometimes it just feels nice to have a little pressure here. This is one of those points that just feels like the ah point. It feels nice to release some strain here. And then take the thumb and run circles around the pad of each finger. So at the base of each finger, there's a little pad, little circles, one at a time. Looking at your hand while you're doing it, keeping your focus here. So we're not doing this and thinking about our to-do list. We're looking, we're feeling, we're experiencing. Think about the best massage you've ever had. It's one of those massages where all you could think about was nothing but how wonderful it felt. So you're looking for that connection. Take the left hand, find the base of the pad of the thumb and work circles all the way up to the base of the thumb. So all the way up, starting at the, toward the wrist, working up to the base of the thumb, little circles with your left thumb. You need to notice if one side feels different than the other. And then maybe looking for that pressure point about halfway through the pad, finding it, holding it, seeing how it feels. And then little circles on the pads of each finger. And then a little pinch on each finger. Now take your thumb and finger, pinch the top. Really making sure we have circulation throughout the fingers. And then look at the fingers and notice if they seem to have a lot more color than they normally do. Maybe they're a little red. Notice. So sometimes just bringing circulation, bringing all of your awareness to these points can help reduce inflammation or strain in your hands and your wrists. Let your hands pick up and drop into your lap, not where you think they should be, but where they fall, where your shoulders fall comfortable. And if you don't think that you did that, pick them up again with the eyes closed and let them drop. Let your hands soften open. And notice if it's hard for them to soften open, oftentimes we hold a lot of gripping tension in our hands without even realizing it. There's also a, a mental cognitive gripping pattern that we can have with our hands, a protective pattern. So we often hold, grip, feel exposed, and we clasp with our hands and protect ourselves with our hands. So think about opening about letting some of that tension go. Almost as if you're giving yourself the permission to feel safe in this moment. So safety can be such a huge stumbling block and seem so big. But we can create little tiny moments in space where we feel safe in our body in this moment in time. And it doesn't have to be for the rest of the day. It's just a little building block as if we're building a little foundation of safety, of feeling solid, of feeling at home in this body, feeling safe in one's body, even if it's just for little tiny moments in time.
Find your breath. Notice what happens when the word safe is uttered. Do you bring extra tension to your body when you start to think about safety? Is there more strain around your breath, more tension in the chest? Notice. Let go of the concept of right or wrong answers and just check in, get to know yourself and your experience in this human experience. And then you're slowly going to make your way down to a resting pose. We're going to be here a while. So begin to land in what you think is right for you for your resting pose. Traditionally, it's taken on your back in Shavasana. However, if there is a pose that you feel is more protective, more safe, more secure, maybe you just feel more comfortable in it, please, please take that pose. Think about the concept, the meaning of each pose. We don't need to line our anatomy up to somebody else's picture perfect version of anatomy or someone else's rules. We can think about the purpose. What are we looking for when we come down to this pose? And we're looking for our resting pose to be as close as a corpse as possible, which means no tension. No tension in the breath, no tension in the thoughts, no tension in the muscles, no tension anywhere. So we're looking to find that place where we feel super, super, super comfortable. We can start to let the ground support us. Check in on the hands. Check in on the feet. Maybe give some wiggles to the toes. Make sure the toes are nice and warm. And then start to loosen and soften and let the ground support you. It can be very helpful to say to yourself right here in this moment, all of my needs are met. Connect to the grounding meaning of that. It draws us out of yesterday's pain and fears and worries and tomorrow's pain and fears and worries and it brings us into right here in this moment right here in this moment all of my needs are met i can soften and i can take a little break start to bring your awareness to your breath and notice if there is any gripping on your breath Notice if you're gripping around in the throat, across the chest. Notice if there's any gripping around the muscles of breathing, down around the diaphragm, underneath the rib cage. And just start to think about softness. So think about breathing in fresh air as if it's just coming in all by itself. It just comes in. It's all soft, automatic. Think about when you're asleep, you don't have to think about strong breath, softly rolling in, fresh air recharging, and then softly rolling out. Think about bringing in fresh and releasing what is no longer needed. I'm gonna repeat the aromatic Aramaic Lord's Prayer. And I do invite you to listen with your heart, listen with your spiritual self. Try not to cognitively process, but to feel the meaning. Feel what you're ready to absorb. Feel what is ready for you, what is coming to you that is correct for you in this moment. And let go of what is not working. Be ready to revisit it some other time without cognitively thinking about. O Birther, Father, Mother of the Cosmos, Creator of all, focus your light within us, make it useful. Create your reign of unity now 
through our hearts and hands. You, your one desire, then acts with ours, as in all light, so in all forms. With gratitude we receive what we need each day, and bread and insight brings flooring life. Loose the cords of mistakes binding us, as we realize the cords, release the cords with which we bind others. Let us remember you always and notice our forgetfulness. From you comes all ruling will, the power of power and life to do. The song that beautifies and renews all. May this be the source from which all my actions flow. So as you begin to soften and land, perhaps thinking about cords, you can give a nice visual to this. You can have a nice imaginative experience. So when we think about, as I guide you through this, I want you to guide, I want you to think about visuals for memories, not particular memories. Try not to do that cognitive thing where the head decides this exact thing is the thing I need to let go of and you think about it and you bring your mind to it because all that is doing is solidifying the connection. You're reminding your mind of this experience. You're giving your body an experience. Try not to think of exact experiences. For me, what works is to think of little discolored bubbles in my physical body. So I think of little discolored bubble, bubbles. I do not think of memories as solely being in my head. So I feel, seem to think about places where I hold tension and I think about little bubbles, little balls, and they're discolored and I see them. And I think about the cord that attaches them to the memory without thinking about the memory, just a little cord that is floating around to something heavy. So it's pulling towards something heavy. And I'm gonna see that cord and I'm gonna snip the cord. The piece is still with me. The memory is still with me. I'm not saying that this is right or wrong. I'm not judging myself or this part of myself, but I'm snipping the cord, the constant pattern of connection between my cognitive head and this experience this constant judgmental flowing cognitive gripping to this experience. So thinking about perhaps a place where you commonly hold tension, thinking about it being a memory, giving it a visual, and thinking of the cord that attaches it, it's heavy. The cord is heavy, maybe it's this big metal chain links and they're holding you down serious cord. See it as a visual. And then think about just softening the cord, letting all of your focus and energy be on being on just undoing the cord. Perhaps it has a little attachment that you can just undo. Let it fall. Let that cord drop. Maybe even taking the time to know that these cords and attachments have served some purpose. We do this for a purpose. Oftentimes they're ways of protection, they're ways of our psychological protection, ways of us to get through, but we can acknowledge their purpose. We can thank them for their service and we can tell them we're ready to let go. We're ready to let go of these bonds, these weights that tie us, things that do not serve us. And as you're lying there, if you get carried away, perhaps you run down a memory, perhaps you chase your brain off the mat already. Just gently soften back into the physical body, especially if you ran away with some thoughts. Notice what you're feeling. Notice if you pulled some tension in somewhere. Most often when we run away with our heads, our body responds. So notice 
Bring all of your awareness to perhaps where you brought that tension and focus on softening that tension. Focus on that breath, bringing in fresh breath to the space and sweeping away the tension with the exhale. Slowly and softly, not increasing tension in the breathing muscles, just softly breathing in, rolling in fresh rolling out anything no longer needed and begin again. Maybe this time you look at that place and see the tension and the cord from that particular spot in your physical body. Maybe these cords are not just the cords of self-judgment, the cords of memory patterns that we have for ourselves. Maybe they're the cords that bind us to experiences with others. And remembering we're not going into the big, huge process of the practice of forgiveness, but we're chopping the cord that binds us to an experience. Releasing the cord that binds us to an experience. We need not think of chopping the cord being this sending out peace, love, and happiness to everyone who's ever done us harm. We need not to make ourselves feel that vulnerability of love and kindness. We can begin the process by just releasing the bind, releasing the cord of experience between yourself and something that perhaps is difficult. An experience that was troublesome between you and another person. It's not that you wrap this person in peace, love, and kindness, and you tell them that they can do whatever they want to you because you're just going to wrap them in peace, love, and kindness. It's that you say, I am ready to no longer be tied to you. I am ready to let this experience be just part of my existence. I no longer want to carry around these heavy cords, these heavy attachments. And this is your spiritual self doing the work. It's your spiritual self that will guide you to what is ready to be released. Not the cognitive head. The cognitive head gets in the way, the ego gets in the way. The cognitive head will say, oh, I know exactly what we need to do. We need to look at this one. And the ego will say, I ready to forgive that person. That's not okay. But the spiritual self will say you're ready. The spiritual self will say you're tired from holding on to this. The spiritual self will guide you to the heaviness and allow you to let it go. And the spiritual self guides us no matter how hard we try to bury it, no matter how hard we try to ignore it. From the start of mankind, we have been looking up at the stars and asking ourselves, what is the meaning of life? And all, all kinds of rules and reasons and philosophies have arisen from this question. We need not think of them as right or wrong. They all come from a similar place. They all come from that wanting to be connected, wanting to feel that connection from your heart to another heart. It's 
So throughout the week, throughout the weekend, whatever's left for you, I invite you to find something spiritual that sings to you. And maybe it's just a song that you love. Read the lyrics. Maybe there's a spiritual text that perhaps you don't understand why it sings to you. I have spiritual texts from my childhood that are deeply meditative for me, not because of their meaning or their purpose, but just because of that ritual experience that I've had. Find that connection and repeat it as often as possible. Maybe just short little snippets. And maybe you just take a moment every day to put your hand on your heart and connect to the space and stop everything else for just a breath or two and do it several times a day. Thinking about grounding yourself in your own spirituality, your own spiritual space. Reminding yourself that you are not just your thoughts. You are not just your worries. You are not just this physical body. There's a part inside that binds it all together and binds us to each other. You need to finish up at the 60 minute mark. Start to bring gentle movements to your fingers and toes. If you're perfectly comfortable in your resting pose, practicing cutting ties, go ahead and spend as much time as you need. As you roll over into a fetal position, begin to connect to being wrapped in a productive position. And one more time, I'm going to repeat the prayer. O birther, father, mother of the cosmos, creator of all, focus your light within us, make it useful. Create your reign of unity now through our hearts and hands. Your one desire then acts with ours, as in all light, so in all forms. With gratitude, we arrive. Oh, sorry. With gratitude, we receive what we need each day in bread and insight for the expand, exploring life. Loose the cords of mistakes binding us as we release the cords with which we bind others. Let us remember you always and notice our forgetfulness. From you comes all ruling will, the power in life to do, the song that beautifies and renews all. May this be the source from which all my actions flow. Slowly make your way to seated position with hands of prayer at heart space. And think about the symbolism of this pose so often used in religious practices or in honoring each other. Think about our heart center. Think about our left and right sides meeting in front of our heart center and think about accepting ourselves as whole and complete, precisely as we are. And then think about accepting each other as whole and complete, precisely as they are. We are all on a journey. We are all making mistakes. We are all learning. May all beings be peaceful and at ease. Thank you for joining me.